Oddworld is home to a great many bizarre creatures, some of which are sapient and others not so. And while Oddworld is vast, about ten times larger than Earth and home to several continents, only one of these has ever been explored so far, the continent named Mudos, located within Oddworld's northern hemisphere. East Mudos was the first region of the continent to be explored over the course of the first three games in the series, with West Mudos being explored in the series' fourth instalment. There are several notable differences in the environments on each side of the continent, with the western side being considerably less developed. The western region and its inhabitants will be covered in an upcoming video, to keep this one at a reasonable length. I'll also not be covering every single species from the first three games due to time constraints, but the most important and recognisable ones are all here. Oddworld has everything that can be expected of a planet with intelligent life. Countryside, large cities, villages, etc. It has a variety of differing climates, such as jungles, forests, deserts and icy mountains. It also has two known moons, the Mudokan Moon and the Gabit Moon, as well as others yet to be revealed. What's curious about these two astral bodies is they each have the respective species' paw prints on their surface, species that we will meet shortly. These enormous prints on the two moons are taken by each of these species to be signs from their gods that they're the chosen ones of Oddworld, and frankly, it seems like the only valid explanation. And so, now, we will look at a variety of species who inhabit this part of Oddworld. They're divided into three groups, industrialists, natives, and wildlife. We'll start with the Mudokans. These are a sapient species, humanoid in appearance, and come under the native classification. They're greenish-blue in colour. The Mudokans evolved from birds, and still possess some feathers that grow out of their heads and, in some cases, on other parts of their bodies. They are said to have hollow bones, making them lightweight and agile, and able to outmanoeuvre even some of the more animalistic species on Oddworld. They're a highly spiritual race, at one time being the rulers of their domain. Some are able to enter a deep state of meditation by chanting. They then conjure up a powerful spiritual energy that can be used to possess the bodies of other beings and control their movements. Many Mudokans are born in captivity, having been enslaved by another sapient race native to Mudos, the Gluckans, who we'll come to soon. Some, however, are born wild and live a tribal lifestyle in the wilderness. They're highly religious, living something akin to a pagan lifestyle. There are a number of different classes within the true traditional Mudokan society, like the tomahawkers, mud archers, shamans, and monks. There are also a number of different tribes, like the Mudomo and the Mudanchi, these tribes worship different animals within their world, but also worship individual deities, like the Almighty Raisin. Not all Mudokans get to live this native lifestyle, however. There are many who live in captivity, being forced to work within the Gluckans' gigantic factories and meat processing plants. The workers in these hellish places are known as scrubs. The Gabbits are another sapient species, capable of speech and intelligent thought. They come under the native classification as well. They're monopedal with one webbed foot, their hind legs having fused into one over the course of their evolution, and live an amphibious lifestyle. They have large heads and enormous eyes. The Gabbits are endangered, being overhunted by an industrialist species known as the Vikers, who we'll get to in another video, chiefly for their eggs which are called Gabbia, a delicacy among Oddworld's elite. They're extremely social, using high-pitched squeaks and squeals to communicate with each other, and are adept aquatic acrobats. 
they seem to display many of the characteristics of both frogs and dolphins. They swim together in pods and mostly eat a type of fish called a worry fish. Young gabbits are known as gabbiwogs, begin their life in an area known as Maspa, the source of the Mongo River in eastern Mudos. Eventually, when they reach maturity, they leave the Mongo River and head for Oddworld's oceans. The Gluckens are an industrialist species, perhaps THE industrialist species on Oddworld. They're native to eastern Mudos and are part of the Octagai family. The Gluckens have large, bulbous heads and glowing eyes, with small, tube-like ears, scaly skin and large teeth. They certainly have a cephalopod-like appearance. They vary in skin colour and tone, ranging from purple to green to brown. While they tend to conceal themselves with sharp suits to give themselves an important and imposing appearance, their bodily structure betrays just how weak these creatures really are. Owing to their over-reliance on technology and lesser species to do all of their hard work for them, their legs have shrunken down and become vestigial, basically useless. As such, they have had to develop long and strong arms to support their body weight. They look simultaneously horrifying and ridiculous, not quite what you expect to see under there. They weren't always like this, however. Many centuries ago, the Gluckens were friendly with the Mudokans, back in their more tribal days. But with the arrival of the Mudokan's moon, the Mudokans declared themselves the supreme species of Oddworld. This enraged the Gluckans, who cut off all ties with the Mudokans and retreated to their own territory. They then began to develop a new civilization, one of heavy industry and technology, forgetting their spiritual past completely and eventually reaching a power level so immense that they were able to enslave their former allies and cause the extinction of at least one known species of wildlife, the Meech, and potentially many more. The Sligs are another industrialist species and serve as the heavies for the Gluckans. This species is known for its violence, cruelty and laziness, often being seen sleeping on the job. While they seem to enjoy their work in security and law enforcement, getting sadistic pleasure from beating the Madokans and gunning them down when they try to escape, they themselves are still effectively slaves to the Gluckans. The Slig Queen provides the Gluckans with her young. Any Sligs that do not meet the Gluckens' standards in terms of their performance at work are sent back to her. They are then punished severely. Originally, the Sligs were primitive, like all of the other intelligent life they share Oddworld with. They lived in the swamps and bogs of East Mudos. The Sligs are small and stocky, with green skin. They have five tendrils over their mouths. Like the previously mentioned gabbits, their legs are fused together, though in the Sligs case, it's believed to be a case of binding their legs together when they are young, rather than a natural physical state that came about as a result of evolution. Also, like the Gluckens, they've developed strong and powerful arms as their primary method of locomotion. That is, until they put their trousers on. Their robotic sleek pants, provided to them by the much more intelligent and advanced Gluckens, allow them much greater mobility. They also wear masks with glowing red eyes, which serve an important purpose, a very important purpose, hiding their ugly faces. The Gluckens don't like the way the Sligs look. The Sligs come in several forms, for example there are the Big Bro Sligs, which are the result of giving regular Sligs a ton of steroids, and the Flying Sligs, who use a flying harness instead of Slig pants. There are many more varieties, but these are mostly based on the equipment and weaponry used. These have little to do with their actual biology, which is the main purpose of this video, and so I'll skip over them. The Paramites are a form of wildlife native to eastern Mudos who make their home in the Paramonian forests. They're worshipped by the Mudokan Mudomo tribe and should be considered extremely dangerous. 
Due to the Gluckens overhunting the Paramites to make Paramite pies, they have become an endangered species. They apparently don't breed in captivity, and so have been hunted to near extinction so that the tasty treat can continue being produced. They're pale in colour due to not spending much time in the sun, living in the shaded forests. They're quadrupedal, and don't seem to have any recognisable facial features, with an appendage resembling a six-fingered hand serving as their face. Within the palm of their face is a small, fanged mouth. The Paramite is carnivorous and deadly, able to kill most creatures with a single blow from its powerful hand face. The Paramites are, in my opinion, the creepiest looking of all of Oddworld's creatures. This is probably because they sort of resemble spiders, and I hate spiders. They are also able to spin silk, which they produce from their abdomen, so there are definitely some parallels in their behaviour. They nest and hunt in large groups, and are highly social creatures. They display intelligent hunting techniques, as whenever they appear to be on their own, they really aren't. They'll appear to retreat, but in reality, it's simply a ploy to lure unsuspecting prey into a trap. They also, while not sapient, have developed a very basic language which consists of clicks, snaps and squeals, among other noises, used to communicate with one another. The Scrabs are my personal favourite in the series, and are a quadrupedal creature, and like the Paramite, are not sapient but have a certain degree of intelligence that allows them to communicate with others of their kind, using barks and growls. I've always liked the design of the Scrabs. I'm not sure what draws me to them in particular, but they certainly look formidable, and frankly like something out of a nightmare. They have four crab-like legs, a large claw-like mouth. They're red and yellow in colour, and again, like the Paramites, don't have any visible eyes. They're driven by pure hunger, and this is the sense they use to navigate the world. They typically don't fight other Scrabs unless they happen to be from a different pack. When they do engage another Scrab in a fight, they each spin around in a mad frenzy, unleashing hit after hit upon each other until one collapses. At this point, the loser is trampled on and left for dead. Brutal. They're worshipped by the ancient Mudanchi Mudokan tribe, and are among the most dangerous predators on the planet. They're typically found in a region of East Mudos named Scrabania. The Elam is a bipedal creature with horns and a horizontal posture. Their colouring is a mix of brown and tan, and they're often used by Mudokans and possibly other sapient species as mounts for travelling. Its chest and abdominal cavity are wide, providing good respiration and food storage. It's unknown if there is any real sexual dimorphism in this species with regards to its horns and its other bodily features. It is believed to be a herbivore, and has a particular affinity for eating honey. Its eyes are set wide apart, giving the elam a wide field of vision. It has two short, double-clawed arms. Its legs are muscular, and its toes have three black claws. A vestigial dewclaw is also present. The elam's body ends in a short, movable tail, which is used to convey its emotions. The slogs are the slig's attack dogs. They're red in colour and bipedal. Like many other animals on Oddworld, they have no visible eyes, but they do have a large mouth with razor-sharp teeth. It's believed that, due to their lack of eyes, they use their barks as a form of echolocation. Their pups are called sloggies. The slogs also have a variation that is huge, bigger than a mudokan. With their large chests, slogs have an enormous lung capacity, and so can sprint for long periods, able to outrun even the light and agile mudokans. Their legs are short, strong and powerful. They're loving companions and loyal to their slig owners. Their favourite food is fresh, bloody meat, and they can smell their prey's fear and, while they too have no eyes, can use their senses to detect the unfortunate prey item's adrenaline levels. 
They usually go for the head or throat when attacking. The slurgs are a basic, slug-like gastropod and the lowest life form known to exist on Oddworld. They're black and purple in colour. When accidentally stepped on, they make a loud squelching noise and then burst, alerting other slurgs within the vicinity to an intruder. Whether or not they can recover from this type of injury is unknown, but it is likely that they can, much like the gastropods of our reality. And finally, the Meeches, who, due to being hunted to extinction by the greedy Gluckens, are no longer around, though it's unknown if the species as a whole is extinct, or if it's just no longer around in East Mudos. There aren't many images available of the Meech, but what little exists shows that it had small forearms and powerful hind legs with three toed feet. They were brown in colour and stood between three and a half and four feet tall. They had two sets of jaws and an undoubtedly ferocious appearance. It can be assumed that, like the scrabs and paramites, they weren't sapient, but had a set of vocalisations that they used to communicate amongst themselves. During their time in existence, the Meeches would have been revered by the Madokans, but it's unknown if the Meeches were worshipped by them per se. It is, however, possible that there is a currently unknown Madokan tribe that did so. The continent of Mudos, specifically Western Mudos, is an area of the planet Oddworld and was first explored in the fourth game in the series titled Oddworld Stranger's Wrath. It's a dry and arid place, with a desert climate, and is rife with crime. It has many parallels to the Old West of the USA, on planet Earth. But this unforgiving environment still hosts a great many life forms, both sapient and otherwise. Much like the eastern part of the continent, an industrial society exists here, though the western region is considerably less developed than its eastern counterpart. The Mongo River runs right through western Mudos. The source of the Mongo is Ma Spa, the birthplace of the Gabits, native to eastern Mudos. There are several settled areas along the river, such as Last Legs, Dusty Hollow, and Buzzerton, as well as New Yoke City. Of course, if there are settlements, then there would surely be life forms who inhabit them. The Steef, for example, is a mammal native to Western Mudos. These noble creatures, legendary among the other species in the region, are critically endangered. The Steef is centaur like, with the lower body of a horse, though with giraffe like proportions. It has cloven hooves. The torso is gorilla-like, and it has a human-like face on a lion-like head. They are an intelligent species, tribal but sapient, and throughout history have served as warriors, guardians, mercenaries, and would have taken on other roles that required bravery, strength, and durability. There are other sapient species in West Mudos that worship the Steefs for their legendary past deeds, and for the protection they provided them. Evidence of this can be seen in cave paintings found across the region. They used to live in herds before their numbers dwindled. While there are now only a few left in existence, the Steefs of the past were highly social. The industrialist races of West Mudos have sadly hunted the Steefs almost to extinction to make a variety of meat products. The clackers are a sapient avian species, resembling a chicken mixed with a pig, and are native to this area of Mudos. They are an industrialist species and also serious consumers, one of the target demographics who buy the meat products, like those made from steefs, created by local industry. They tend to be between 5 and 6 feet in height, with a great many bird-like features, their orange beaks and feathered limbs being the most obvious examples of this. They also have three-toed feet. They do not possess the ability to fly, however, so their wings are simply used as arms, with the feathers at the ends serving as fingers. They have non-avian features too, like their short, curly tails that resemble that of a pig's. They also have visible ears that sit on top of their heads, quite unbird-like, and the nostrils above the base of their beaks resemble a pig's snout. 
However, unlike pigs or chickens, the clackers have forward-facing eyes, a noted trait of carnivorous predators and humans, providing them with binocular vision. They walk upright like humans too. The female clackers lay eggs, however, and so are not mammals. The clackers are almost certainly descended from birds, much like the Madokans on the other side of the continent. Maybe the clackers and the Madokans are distant relatives. The slegs are a non-sapient, dog-like species and extremely similar to the slogs found in East Mudos. It's likely these are a different breed of the same creature or very closely related. The slegs are larger and broader than the slogs. And like the slogs who are loyal to their slig owners, the slegs are loyal to their outlaw and wolvark owners. These creatures are, like the slogs, vicious and should be avoided if possible. They can be found scattered along the Mongo River and, when dry, the Mongo Valley. The grubs are an amphibian, near-threatened, sapient species who live peacefully along the Mongo River, which is their primary water source. They are salamander-like in lifestyle and appearance. These are the beings who worship the now-endangered, previously mentioned Steefs, who had taken a liking to the small and helpless grubs and would protect their settlements from threats. They're tribal in lifestyle and live in small villages along the river. Due to the nearby clackers expanding their settlements outwards and other industrialist species moving in on their territory to acquire resources, the grub population, like that of the Steefs, is dwindling. They seem to be fairly advanced, or at least were at one point, as the settlement known as Last Legs is a grub city, quite possibly the last one in existence. The majority, however, seem to live in small fishing villages. Much like the Madokans of the East, the grubs live a highly religious life, worshipping nature and specifically the different spirits that inhabit it. Their personal favourite is the river spirit, and they also revere the upstream journey of the gabbits to their spawning grounds at Mars Bar, the source of the Mongo River. The grubs, despite their peaceful way of life, are known to be ferocious combatants when threatened. The wolvarks are an industrialist species and serve as security for the various factories and processing facilities found in the region. In many ways, they are a lot like the sligs found in East Mudos. Like the sligs, the wolvarks are sadistic, cruel and small-minded, deriving great pleasure from the suffering they inflict on other species. They possess intelligence in the way that other sapient species do, able to use tools and speech, usually in the forms of weapons and threats. They have a reptilian appearance, with green or beige skin and beady eyes. They have small ears protruding from the sides of the head, and often have warts on their faces. They also have an underbite and small, sharp teeth. The wolvarks are exceedingly cruel, arguably more sadistic than the sligs, as the wolvarks have been known to impale the grubs, who they have been employed to harass and bully, onto wooden pikes. This happens when they've been caught fishing after a ban on fishing in their own waters had been placed on them by the psychopathic boss of the local Secto Spring Bottled Water Company. The Octogai is a cephalopod, squid-like in appearance, and a part of the similarly named Octogai family. As far as I'm aware, they're pronounced the same way, but then again I'm not exactly renowned for my accurate pronunciations. Anyone who's ever listened to my audiobooks here on YouTube can attest to that. Being a part of the Octagai family means they're closely related to the Gluckens, who inhabit East Mudos, and share many of their characteristics. Unlike the Gluckens, though, the Octagai are primarily aquatic, but are able to survive on dry land through the use of a host body. They're parasitic in lifestyle, and attach themselves to a victim's head to gain control over its body. Much like the Gluckens, they're greedy, obsessed with wealth and power, and are not afraid to steamroll over any person or species that goes against their business interests. They're also fond of expensive cigars and sharp suits. Among the many cave and rock paintings found across Western Mudos, the Octagai can be seen doing battle with the Steef and the Grubs in many of them. The Glocktagai, unlike the other life forms that make Western Mudos their home, are not natural beings. They're entirely artificial, though they are alive. 
They're found all across western Mudos, wherever there is water. They were created by the Octagai, by combining their DNA with that of the Gluckens to create something new and terrifying. This was done through genetic engineering and alchemy. Magic does indeed exist on Oddworld, as was stated in the previous video when discussing the Madokan's meditation and possession abilities. It would seem that some form of dark magic was utilised during the creation of the Glocktagai. They also use these otherworldly abilities to transform themselves into spectre-like forms, which allow them to move around the world in a ghostly way. While unnatural, they are considered a part of the Octagai family. They are much larger than their fellow family members who created them, and have slate grey skin. Their legs, like the Gluckens, are vestigial, and their arms are hypertrophied. They don't have hands like the Gluckens, however, instead walking on the tips of three sharp claws on each of their two arms. These claws are also used as weapons, which are used to impale their victims. Its head takes up the majority of its body mass. Its body is much smaller. It has ruby-coloured eyes and six tentacle-like mandibles that hang from its mouth. Their heads also contain all of their organs. Their brains are massive, and this makes them one of the deadliest creatures to exist in the region, possibly on all of Oddworld. The Mudos continent is also home to a number of strange critters, and while much smaller than the other animals found here, such as the Scrabs, Paramites and Slegs, are no less deadly. Many of these are considered pests. They seem to come in many varieties, but most seem to be comprised of a round blob covered with fur, though some have additional extremities. Notable examples of these creatures include the Fuzzles, the Chipmunks, the Stunks, and the Boom Bats. They're mammalian and all possess teeth, some razor sharp. Some, like the Boom Bat, have wings, while others, like the Stunks and Chipmunks, are just a furry ball with eyes and a tail, and teeth. While these creatures should be considered extremely dangerous, those Oddworld inhabitants who possess a natural harmony with nature should be able to coexist with them, and even get them to follow as companions, or even use them as vicious projectiles against their enemies. There is also a vast array of bug life, examples of these being the Sting Bee, the Sniper Wasp, the Bolomite, the Thud Slug, and the Zap Fly. These, too, can be used by one who is at ease within the wilds of West Mudos. They can all be found across the region, and all the way up and down the Mongo River. Western Mudos is just as fascinating as the eastern part of the continent, and Oddworld itself is undoubtedly a bizarre place. But like I said last time, it's definitely one of the best examples of world-building I've ever seen. Beyond the main characters of the games, there are a great number of fully fleshed out species. Some are just animals doing their thing, some are natives who live tribal lives, and others are industrialists, much like the ones we have in our world, filled with greed and a lust for power and control. And of course, there are the environments themselves, of which many could, if you'll pardon the cliché, be described as characters themselves. The dark, grim and mechanised Rupture Farm setting of the first game has a distinct feel of its own, with a unique atmosphere that has certainly left a massive imprint on my mind. And the same can be said for the Wild West setting of the fourth game in the series, which was the area covered in this video. It's completely different to what we had seen before, but there can be no question that it takes place within the same world. These games had a shared universe before it was called. We'll begin with the Vikers, who are an androgynous, hermaphroditic race of purple-skinned tripeds. They have frail bodies with disproportionately large heads and small beady eyes. As a result of self-inflicted, life-extending surgery, which allows the Vikers to survive long past their natural lifespan, their skin is wrinkled and saggy, with bones, veins and muscles easily visible. Vikers have a total of seven limbs. Four of these are short, spindly arms, each ending in three long-clawed digits, but with no discernible hand. Notably, the claws themselves are used for gripping objects, as opposed to the digits, which are short and stubby in comparison. The remaining limbs are legs, arranged in a tripodal stance, with two facing forwards and one backwards. 
Unlike a number of other industrialist species on Mudos, vikers are hermaphroditic rather than eusocial. That is to say that, unlike Gluckens, Sligs and Mudokens, vikers have no queen or no defined class structure. Like Mudokens, vikers show little regard for clothing, usually dressing in little more than a loincloth, though headgear and eyewear are also common. The vast majority of vikers speak in a shrill, whiny voice, though some have a much deeper register. Although they bear a passing resemblance to the Gluckens, and indeed the rest of the Octagai family, vikers belong to a distinct taxonomic order. The only other species known to exist within this order are the interns, who are often exploited by their viker cousins as indentured labour and security forces. We'll come back to them soon. In contrast to other ruling industrialist races, such as the Gluckens, Vikers are more than capable of defending themselves, thanks mostly to their sharp, highly dexterous claws. Although preferring to employ lower industrialist species for their grunt work, such as sligs and interns, Vikers themselves will fight, if necessary, with some gladly joining in using their laboratory syringes and meat cleavers as weapons. That being said, Vikers are individualistic to the extreme. Despite their obsession with inflicting pain on others, a Viker may quickly be reduced to a sobbing wreck when this pain is reciprocated. The interns are to Vikers what sligs are to Gluckens, a slave race bred to do their master's bidding. They do all the dirty work for the Vikers, all the while drowning out all unwanted noises with the latest beats pumping into their heads via headphones. Like the Vikers, their heads are abnormally large compared to the rest of their bodies. Unlike Vikers, however, interns are bipedal and have only two arms with five fingers and no thumbs, and considerably more muscle mass. They also have vertically aligned mouths that were stitched shut by their Viker masters to keep them from constantly whistling to the sound of their annoying music. Interns are the subservient species to the Vikers, filling menial administrative tasks such as filing, porting, and checking up on experiments. They also act as the security force in the Vikers' facilities, equipped with the latest consumer goods weaponry. Interns are loyal lackeys, highly supportive of the Vikers' work despite their poor working conditions, and are every bit as sadistic in their scientific methodology. Interns have long, canoe-like heads, along which runs a vertical slit of a mouth, only ever seen stitched up. They are surgically prevented from whistling while they work. They have two small prehensile horns, which are used to express feelings. Their spindly arms end with five long, spidery fingers that pack a mean slap, and their feet normally appear to be stitched up stumps. Due to their long working shifts, most interns have succumbed to melted candle syndrome. Interns usually adorn themselves with trendy purple and yellow striped speedos with matching reversed baseball caps and their excessively loud headphones. The appearance and behaviour of fleeches is drawn from a number of animals. The idea of pets being flushed down the toilet comes from the urban legend of baby alligators, taken from Florida as pets, being flushed down toilets and forming large colonies in the sewers of New York City. The Oddworld equivalent is a fine example of the Gluckens' wasteful, throwaway culture. Accordingly, the mouths of a fleech look like stumpy versions of a gator's snout. The teeth are placed on the outside of the mouth, to give it a cheeky yet threatening expression. Their name is thought to be a portmanteau of frog and leech, the sticky tongue of the former obviously being the inspiration behind the fleech's own. The fleech's ability to stretch open their mouth is inspired by the ability of snakes to unhinge their jaws. Their locomotive cycle is based on that of the inchworm. They have also been compared to sharks and, most obviously, worms. Meeps are large, unipedal mammals native to Oddworld that resemble sheep. Meeps are typically used as livestock and are featured ingredients in tasty treats produced by rupture farms. 
They graze in open fields and valleys, and their meat is known to be used as slog grub. Meeps have one large eye and one foot. To move, they hop on their foot, similar to gabbits. They have a large head and rounded body with a stubby tail. Their eye is normally half closed, but opens wide when frightened. Meeps aren't the most intelligent creatures in Oddworld. All they ever do is graze, and they must be herded to do what they are told. A much more intelligent being, however, is the Almighty Raisin, a wise, long-lived, seed-like creature that has evolved from an elder tree in the northern parts of Mudos. Because of his vast knowledge and wisdom, the Madokans hold him to a near religious level, often going to see him when seeking guidance or advice. Unable to move, he relies on small creatures called rats as an extra thousand or so pair of eyes to see the world around him. The Almighty Raisin lives in one of the many underground caverns of Mudos. The Almighty Raisin spent his first 6,000 years as an elder tree himself. After this, he reached his third stage of life, shedding his roots and limbs to eventually become what he is today. Including his life as a tree, the Almighty Raisin is roughly 14,400 years old. The Almighty Raisin has no arms or legs, is about 12 feet in height, and weighs a little more than a ton. Unable to move without the help of others, the Almighty Raisin spends all of his time sitting about in his lair, astrally projecting his consciousness onto the world above. When dislodging his mind from his body, the Almighty Raisin drifts his consciousness across the landscape of Mudos to see or hear through the eyes and ears of others. The first and foremost interest of the Almighty Raisin is to try to regain a sense of balance to the land of Mudos. In his visions, he has perceived a horrific doom clouding over the land, but the Raisin believes that there are several alternative futures, thus he tries to influence a destiny that he believes to be the most peaceful and harmonic. He loves the simple creatures in life, and finds the greatest pleasure when casually observing through the eyes and ears of newborns. He is seen into the personal and private lives of all the inhabitants of Mudos. As a result, he is able to have compassion for even those whom he would consider being enemies. He has witnessed so many things for so many generations that he simply hasn't much patience for the foolishness or naivety of others. It's difficult for others to understand his speech, as his statements are usually loaded with several compounded messages. He's been known to fall asleep in mid-sentence as well, leaving his listeners wondering. And that's it. I don't think I forgot any, but if I did, leave a comment and let me know. Thank you for watching, and a big thank you goes out to my members and patrons. This has been Beware the Q, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.